Okay, so uh, first year students, I, I know uh, you saw the, what, what you can do. This is the first time you've been exposed to this, first time that you've probably seen a lot of these fields, first time you've been exposed to architecture, construction engineering. You can see what a great job the second year students did. And um, hopefully, you know, if this is something that interests you, we want you back. We want you back at the uh, Northern Round, back in Providence, so that you can continue and you can build on what you learned. We want to so for parents and friends and family who are here, just to give you a little recap, what we do in um, first year, we never had this as, a, as, you know, most of us never had this as professionals. You know, we learned our own way. We found our own way into the fields that we do. But the students here, they have an opportunity in high school when they're, when they're still trying to figure out what, what do I want to do in life, you know, this is an opportunity to at least kick the tires of different, uh, different fields. So what we do is in the first part of the year, we had them work on, we built gumdrop towers to learn a little bit about physics, a little bit about how structures work together. We did some, we broke beams to teach them about structural engineering. We built and broke the beams. Uh, we did some planning layouts for architecture. We built 3D models, physical paper models of buildings to learn how everything, how something that's flat on paper can act, is actually representing a 3D object, an actual a building that you're, that you're in. Uh, we talked about landscape design. We talked about all this, how everything comes together, how the contractors, you know, we did cost estimating. We, we tried to give them a good, well-rounded you know, introduction into the field. Then, in the second part of the year, starting in January, we, we always take that knowledge and then we turn it into a, um, a project. And we, and we tell them, okay, now we're going to give you a problem. This is what we do as is, is, uh, professionals. You solve problems. That's what we tell the students. And here they have a problem. Their problem in Northern Rhode Island is you have an owner of a piece of a piece of land at the corner of Exchange and Roosevelt Avenue in Providence, right across from the City Hall. So we want to develop that piece of land into a mixed-use building. So you're going to have three units. You're going to have uh, both. All the units are going to have the same footprint. All the units are going to be a uh, commercial space on the first floor, and then you're going to have residential on the second and third floors. How you approach it is up to you. We told them that they had to have two bedrooms. We told them they had to have a bathroom. We told them that they had to be able to explain how, how their buildings work. So these are just a little, you can see right now it's a parking lot. And you know what you can do to take that parking lot and turn it into a really you know, habitable place and a place that people would want to visit. So um, that's, that's really it. We tried to give them very basic skills, and then week by week, we worked with them to develop this into a, a working plan. And the emphasis is always on knowing why you're doing what you're doing. So what I'd like to do is introduce Team A and up here, for, uh, if, you want to, uh, if you want to come up front, and you guys are going to be talking about your music store. So again, just to remember, what they have is, is there are three different parts of the same building. And they'll explain where they are in this building. Just if you want to introduce the team, aren't they? Oh, they're fine. Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Edwin, and we are Team A. Um, we design a music store, first floor, residential is second, and third floor. Um, our building's in the corner of the street. We wanted glass on the building because we think that would attract more customers. Um, we got park in the back and greenery on the front. And our building is down the street from high school.
the middle building is a side view. It shows the patio and the big side window for the dining room inside. And the one all the way to the right would be the rear view for the building. And that would be like a solid wall. And on the top is the master bedroom windows. So this is the first floor plan of the building. This would be the music store area. And right in the middle, up on top, is the guitar wall. And on the top side, well, <coughs> the left side of the building, but on the top side would be four windows facing outside towards the street to attract more customers. And uh, there are stairs, and there's a counter, and storage for instruments, and things like CDs, and things that teenagers would buy because there's a school right down the street. And we have a bathroom in the back, and some more storage space, and a manager office. So the second floor plan is the first floor of the residential area. There's a closet in the middle, the table next to the closet, and an island for the kitchen. And we have a pantry and a bathroom. And those are the stairs leading up to the third floor. And those are bookshelves right behind the living room. And the living room is on top to the right with the two couches and a fireplace. Leading up to the third floor plan, this is the top floor on the residential area in the building. We have the master bedroom all the way to the left with a queen bed and um, a master bath right next to it with two closets. And we have a patio outside, which would be nice to keep it a lot more open for um, the residents. And there's a game room right inside from the patio and a bathroom. And there's one bedroom for children and another bedroom underneath that one for more children. <laughs> I'm going to pass it off to talk about the um, elevation of the building. Okay, we're going to invite Team B. It's a lunch block.
So just to uh, remind everybody, um, when you're giving your presentation, if you can just face the audience because they want to see you and they want to hear what you have to say, and you can always see the board is also on the computer screen right here. So let's try to talk into the microphone. You don't have to shout. You can just, you can just stand up normally and just speak into the microphone. Okay, Team B. Uh, my name is Hugo Medeiros. I'm from Blackstone Academy. And uh, me and my group designed a cafe in the lunch block. In the lunch block, it's, um, it's a simple pathway from the counter to the vending. Um, here's the kitchen area, the bathroom, everything. It's set as a quiet, relaxing <coughs> cafe to um, attract the community around us. And the tables are set in a zigzag formation to reduce clutter. And the side exit leads to Tanya's part. So, Tanya. My name is Tanya Rodriguez, and I come from Central Park High School. Um, my part of the cafe was to make a patio. This patio has <coughs> a water feature, which is a waterfall that goes on the side of the building. And this is to stop noises that might come around our cafe. Since we do have a fire station and a police station near in front of us, and also we have landscaping, which are bushes that are on the side and in front where there's a gate. And this is to give more of a privacy to this patio. Because since we have a adjacent parking lot next to us, and this is to give privacy since we do have City Hall also in front of us. This is to give um, these people a space where they don't have to think about like work and they can just relax in this environment. And we also have a stage where people can come and perform whenever they want. And it's now time for a trip. Hi. My name is Charlie Arbolana. I come from Blackstone Academy. And uh, when I was designing this, I mean, my main thought was I wanted something very open. So when I was designing it, I was thinking about how it would look when somebody went up. So when somebody goes up the stairs, I want them to be able to see everything nice and clear, which is why I made a nice open space. And from that open space, you can put like a couch and nice, nice stuff. So, and we're going into the dining room. I put a, a table in the middle, a circular table, because circle tables are nice. And I think it's uh, very nice. And the kitchen's right next to it, so that way, whenever you're serving a meal, you just bring it right to the table. It's very close, and it's a nice dining area. Um, I also put a window right there, so that way, there's like nice, fresh, nice sunlight, you know. And. Um, also, I put in, there's an office space, so that way you can work, you know, but you're not on the same floor as where, you know, whoever is upstairs is sleeping. And uh, I put in the laundry and the bathroom, so that way everything's conveniently close. And I did all of that, so that way it can look nice, leading into the third floor. I rent it. Hello, my name is Brandon Aguilar. I'm from Gladstone Academy. Um, I designed both the front elevation and the apartment, the third floor. <coughs> um, as for the third floor, there is notable features are the spacious bathroom, along with two bedrooms opposite of each other, with uh, with walk-in closets connecting each other, um, filling in that open space. Now, as for the front elevation, some notable features are the is the uh, the sign, the lunch block, and two open and uh, not open um, glass windows to allow people to that are walking, passing by, to be able to see in and attract customers. And uh, well, that's our presentation. And thank you for your time. Just to 
uh, just to recap for everybody, you can see this was the building. We started with Team A, we did the music store. Team B, we did the cafe. Cafe has a patio here. And then this is Team C. Uh, we start right in the middle. It had its own particular challenge. <coughs> This here is the second floor plan, which is divided into a kitchen and a living area. The kitchen is 459 square feet, and the living area is 373 square feet. Um, this is where the residential area begins. Um, in the kitchen, we have a triangle form between the stove, the sink, and the fridge to form a kitchen triangle for a minimized walking distance. Um, there's also a comfortable, a comfortable amount of storage room. In the living room, we have two large nine feet windows, nine foot wide windows, to provide to provide a lot of lighting and a nice view. Um, there's a half wall dividing the kitchen and the living area so that the natural lighting can spread across the <coughs> second floor. Um, and I would like to pass it on to John Paul to talk about the third floor. My name is uh, Jean Paul and I was in charge of designing the uh, layout of the third floor. Uh, there's not really much to it. Um, the slide doesn't. Yes, it does. Uh, the two um, large rectangular areas on the left side are the um, master bedrooms. Uh, they were designed with um, noise in mind. So the two uh, rectangles uh, in the middle, separating them, are uh, walk-in closets, so that. Um, if there's anything going on in one of the bedrooms, the person in the other one can hear it and they can sleep soundly. Um, the uh, rectangle on the bottom right with the crudely drawn furniture is the um, secondary bedroom. It can be used as a guest room or as a um, really storage room, however the uh, occupancy fit. Um, the top right has the bathroom and um, there's a room with a washer and a dryer in the middle in the common area. And in total, the floor has roughly 600 uh, square feet of space. Um, I want to pass it over to Evan, who's going to talk about the plumbing and the uh, infrastructure behind the whole building. <coughs> Plumbing and the heating for the all three floors of the building. You might have noticed in the slides that there's red lines and blue lines all the way across on different sides. The red is a hot water baseboard used for heating the floors, and the blue is plumbing evacuation, hot water, cold water, things such as that. We decided to use the hot water baseboard because if you have a furnace for this, it can be used to heat the hot water baseboard as well as the hot water for the sink and the shower. Um, over to the right, you'll see the bathroom on the third floor. All those lines probably look confusing from here, but it has 
ways for the cold water and the hot water to go in, and also evacuation to go out. Up in the top corner, you can see there's a little square, it's kind of faded on this picture, but it's called a chase, and that's used to go through all three floors, and that's so that everything goes down one way. All the evacuation and all the water goes up and down one way, so it's, that's also because normally you could do it through interior walls, but there's not really interior walls here, that's a half wall <coughs> in those closets, and they're not lined up on each floor. So that's the purpose of the chase. Uh, the hot water baseboards are located near the windows because that's usually where a draft would come in and that's where you'd want the heat. That's really all it took for the heating and the, uh, the plumbing, so I'm going to hand it over to Angel who did the elevations. Hello, my name is Angel. I'm a freshman from the Central Falls High School and I'm going to describe the elevations of the building. Well, the building has three stories and three floors, and this building is also sharing two common walls with the, with two other buildings. It's in, in the middle of the side. And this building has is 25 foot wide, 25 feet wide, and 32 feet high. Um, also, the building is made out of red brick wall. The reason of this is because it fits with the traditional historical Pawtucket wall, where most buildings are made out of red brick wall, and one was make it uh, fit with the city. And there are two separate pictures, as you can see over there. The one at the left is a glass door that goes along with a, a glass window to show display in the store so that people can see around. And to make it feel as a welcome place. And the door at the right is a regular wood door for security. And that's the door for the entry to the apartments, the second and third floor. And that's what I have to say. I'll leave it to my companion. And my Joists and plywood sheathings, and they're both designed basically the same except that the second, and they both have a 45 square foot of live load. But the second floor can hold 20 pounds per square foot dead load, and the third floor only 10. Um, the second and third floors are also built to have an L over 40, um, L over 40 deflection, which is above the standard L over 360 firmware stable design. 